Hi, uh, this is Kevin Head. And Charlie Brown. And this is a very special edition of Whiskey Business. Uh, this week, we're going to be trying uh, a lot of different Irish whiskeys to help ce celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And this Saturday, if you get a chance, uh, down at my bar, the Rhino in Missoula, Montana, um, we are going to be tasting all eight of these whiskeys. Um, so if you get a chance between... Uh, two and five o'clock uh, after the St. Patrick's Day Parade, come on in. And, uh, and a lot of this I'm going to be talking, uh, or I'm going to be letting uh, Charlie talk about. Uh, he's, uh, we're both have Irish uh, in our background. He has a lot more than I. And, uh, and so that way we'll be able to um, have his knowledge uh, talking about all these different distilleries. So, uh, Charlie, uh, I think the first one that we're going to try here, I don't know, unless you have anything else. To try no, to no, that's fine. Okay. The Let's first, go for it. The first one we're going to try today is called the Dubliner. Uh, and the Dubliner, um, I don't know how long this has been on, on the market. I've never tasted Dubliner before. All right. So I, I, it may be that it's been around for a long time uh, in Ireland or in the United States, but it's just recently made it here to Montana. So we'll be starting with the Dubliner, Dubliner then going with the new uh, Jameson uh, cask mates uh, from I, IPA barrels, then the Red Bush from Bush Mills, uh, the single malt from Teeling, the 12 year old uh, single malt from uh, Napo Castle, uh, Yellow Spot, which is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, the Jameson 18, uh, which uh, they're not making anymore. So if you if you like it, uh, buy whatever you can right now, put it aside. And uh, what I consider one of the best red breasts, which is the 12 year old cask strength. We and, agree. Wow, I like that. Uh, yeah. right, well, let's see you after about the fourth or fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've um, never heard of the Dubliner. Does it have an establishment date on this? Bottle? It doesn't. There, there isn't a. Uh, hmm. uh, there's no um, uh, vintage or age statement on it. I was wondering um, because when we first time we went to Ireland many many years ago, um, I think it was ninety nine. There was um, um, a new distillery right off uh, off the college in Dublin. And I'm just wondering if that was it. Would that be the Cooney? Isn't the Cooney distillery in Cooley? Dublin? Coo Cooley? Uh, is it Cooley? Yes, Cooley. Cooley. Yeah. That's in Dublin, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. But that's way outside of the, 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 the one where I remember Cooley being was way out by Guinness. So it's quite a ways away. All right. But there was a new one going in. Well, let's give this one a nose. Right. Nice, pleasant nose. That's a nice, pleasant nose. It's not, it's not real big. Is this a blend? It is a blend. Okay. There may be a little bit of uh, uh, a little grassy, grassy, maybe a little yeah. cinnamony, spicy. Definitely spicy, which would lead me to believe that the blend is made with rye, but I could be wrong. A lot of honey. Lots of honey and the spice showing up again. It is. I get more of a cardamom than cinnamon, but it's there's definitely a big spice in there. What do you think of this? It's pretty nice. I mean, it's a nice little whiskey to drink. You know, this is one of those whiskeys that I think if if you have some of this, it's <laughs> um, not to promote excess drinking, but uh, this has a certain poundability to it. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. That um, it's, yeah. it's smooth. It's very smooth. And like for, if you go into a lot of um, Irish pubs, uh, of course, Jameson is, is huge and uh, uh, Tillamore Dew and, and uh, for the Protestants, uh, Bushmills. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, this to me is on a level that's with that. So if you right. want to knock back a shot, um, not sit this, and this, savor it, yeah. this, this would be very good for this that, one. I think. Okay, let's go to number two. This is a new one I haven't tasted. I've read a lot about it, but I have never tasted it. So, and this is the cask. Mates, this is the IPA. Uh, the IPA. Last, uh, um, the it, first one that they did was uh, from a stout, and the way that they did this was they, um, after the the whiskey aged uh, in casks for a while, they took the casks and um, they filled them with beer. 
Um, the first one being uh, stout, the second one now being IPA. Um, then they they let the beer rest in the casks for a while, um, probably like six months, I would think, maybe something like that. Then they took the casks back to Jameson, and then they filled them up again for with whiskey to finish them off to uh, to give them uh, a little bit of the flavor from the IPA. Well, I will say one thing about this whiskey I do like. I've had this is my third IPA whiskey, and this is the only one that would I would ever drink. I got to I got to agree with you on that too. I you know we have a we have a oops what am I going to be drinking my water there I need to put some Jameson in there. Uh, but you know, with this one, are you getting any of the, um, kind of the citrusy hoppiness yeah. on the, on the, I certainly on the do. nose? Not so much on the nose, but on the finish I do. Uh, the citrus I get on the nose, the hops I really get on the pellet and finish. Yeah, there definitely is a citrus in there. Kind of like, almost like a blood orange zest, if yeah. not like a grapefruit. Well, uh, yeah, I was thinking lemon or grapefruit. I, I wasn't thinking blood orange. But it, it's um, it's not unpleasant. No, and it's, and I, and, I, and as I said, I think we both agree on. I think it's because of the hops. Uh, that, yeah, you know, gives it gives it that citrusy. Yeah, probably uh, quality. But on the finish, wow! There's there's something of a there's something of a um, a dried fruit in that too. Smell your glass before you put any water in. It. See if you get. Gee, I wonder who touched that, that trick. We're yeah, gonna, there is. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> there is. You're right. A little bit of some kind of dried fruit in there. Yeah, it's uh, like that dried trail mix fruits, you know, like apricot and, you know, and the banana, you, you, it's pineapple. This has a lot of nougat in it. Yeah, it does. That's the other thing I was going to say. It you definitely know, it has that palate. It's, it's sweet. It's easy drinking. But it finishes dry. Finishes dry after a while. It it, it comes out. But with it a, really hit me on the back of the pellet on the finish. It was that IPA. But then again, uh, for hops. all of these whiskeys that are here, these are all whiskeys that you can buy right now. And probably the most expensive one being uh, the Jameson 18 year. I'm going to guess that's probably around 150, 160 dollars, yeah. something yeah. like that. Uh, but otherwise, everything here is available. In the U.S. Well, should we go on? Well, you are just flying through them, my friend. Well, we have, you know, we have guests coming, and yes, we do. We've got a lot of friends <laughs> coming. Uh, it's it's about four twenty. Oh, I shouldn't say that four twenty. You know what four twenty means? Yeah, it's, yeah, no. Uh, we're dealing with whiskey, though, not the other thing. Uh, and we have a bunch of folks coming in to smoke cigars and watch the uh, NCAA tonight. Uh, so the next one is Red Bush from Bushmills. And uh, this is matured to perfection in bourbon casks. And uh, I was actually pretty surprised by this. Okay. And that's, this is $26 a bottle. Yeah, which I think is overpriced. <laughs> is that your Catholic uh, upbringing coming out yeah. there, buddy? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> If you go to Jameson Distillery ever, and they show you a film about they never thought it mattered what religion anyone was or if they were even religious in hiring good staff to run Jameson. But the, the first Irish Catholic ever hired by Bush Mills is when they hired, they signed an agreement in the 90s. I think it was 93, if I remember correctly. And they signed this agreement because all the Irish, when industry was going down, but specific distilleries were selling bottles. Well, with that amalgamation or agreement, they became united, and then you had to buy all their whiskeys. But there was a certain part in the charter that said, and you will hire indiscriminately from all races, creed, color, religion. religion. And that's when... Bushmill, which was 200 years old, hired their first Irish Catholic. And But the funny thing is, I believe now, uh, Jameson and Bushmill are owned by the same company, aren't they? Jameson and Bushmills. Bushmill. Aren't they owned by the same company now? I don't know. 
That's okay. a good question. Well, if, and if they are, then, you know. Well, Bushmill is owned by Diazio. Uh, okay. Yeah. John, um, who owns Jameson? Uh, is Bushmill still owned by Diageo? Well, I thought they were, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, that'd be a good question, folks, to find out. Yeah. Uh, we'll try to find out on this for you for the next uh, episode, webisode, whichever. And episode, yeah. So uh, what do we think on the nose on this? This is the It's the pleasant. It's, uh, I don't get a clear definition of anything. No, except the bourbon. There's kind of like a, a tea or maybe a yeah uh, yeah that would you know, be a good maybe, yeah. maybe a sweet tea yeah sweet tea they'll call me sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of the name of that tea that I used to like. Oh, sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. It was, yeah, it was a wonderful go to sleep uh, beverage, and that's what they sold it as. It was a very pleasant thing. A, a light nougat, you know. I may be getting a little bit of the vanilla from uh, from the that. cask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Finishes to me pretty nondescript, but as you said, it's pleasant. It's pleasant it's, draft. It's, it's, it's nice. It's pleasant. You know, it's um, it's uh, caramel uh, creme brulee um, with a little bit of spice in there. Um, I get. I get something like creme brulee. I would call it more of. Well, that's no, that's probably as good as you're going to do. I uh, easy drinking. Very easy drinking. That's what I was saying. I I think that one would sell easily. Not because it's um, as Kevin would tell you. I I'm, I'm the kind of person that likes something that that slaps me and then says face and says wake up bitch, I'm here. And if it isn't that kind of whiskey, I really don't enjoy it that much. And that one this, doesn't this, do that uh, to me. This has some honey in it, too. It does. And it finishes uh, very dry, spicy, um, almost like a, a more bitter tea uh, at the end of it, too. Yeah. It's almost like you taste the wood. Yep. It's a little acidic. So, next we're going on to tealing. And Teeling, how long have they been around? Well, I think they've been around for a while, but they haven't been in the U.S. all that long, have they? I don't know that they've been around that long. I did watch, uh, I watched, uh, what are they called? A program? Yeah, it's a program about <laughs> entrepreneurs, basically, and all the entrepreneurs and what they've done to the whiskey industry has, has been, they've done several, and Teeling was one that they did that about and I don't remember, honestly, what they said. And this is the uh, Teeling single malt. Oh, hold on. There are minute. several different Teelings. Mm -hmm. And um, I, in the past, I've tried the, the grain, and the grain is really nice. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is uh, pot still single malt. Uh, for those of you that don't know what a pot still single malt is, uh, let me acquaint you with that. Uh, pot still single malt came about as a direct result of a tax that was put on Irish distilleries in seventeen late 1700s, I think 1785 or around there. And what it basically said was, if you have all processed uh, single malt in something, then you're going to pay a tax of so-and-so. So what the Irish finally came up with in, in about the 1840s, in, instead of processing all the single malt, they just put the barley grain right in, no processing. And that, and then added some rye. And that's how the single malt pot still came about. And basically what it is, it's a combination of malted barley, of unmalted barley, and generally rye whiskey. And that's what a pot still single malt is. Good. I'm glad you said that because, frankly, I've I've always heard different things about it, and uh, talk about having that that uh, um, recipe. It, I've never ever yeah. heard that before. And then, in, uh, you know, I can't remember the year there either. I'm just going to say 1885, roughly a hundred years later. Anyway, they repealed that tax, and when they repealed that tax. They talked about going away from the pot still single malt, but it had become so popular that 
There was no way they could do that. So, and it's also shaped like a pot, too, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is indeed. So this uh, this has this almost has a little lanolin in the nose. Actually, I find that very pleasant. I, is, yeah, I get lanolin. I get uh, on the nose. I get a, a little bit of there's more tea in there. Aloe or something. Some some kind of soft lotion you know you use on your body. There's a tea. There's a sweetness in there that's. Um, Maybe like a, I don't want to say root beer, but maybe like a sarsaparilla, something a little bit lighter. Creamy. Yeah, it's something creamy. It's creamy. I don't know what it is, to be like honest a, with you. A but sweet it's pleasant. cream of some kind? Or a... oh, a lot of honey. A lot of honey, but it's very nice. This is, this is the reason I like a whiskey like this is. You're getting the same thing on the nose as you get on the finish, which means it's blowing like a symphony from the nose to the pellet to finish. And that's what makes a good whiskey. And that is a good whiskey. I had never tasted this before, but that's a good whiskey. I think this is nice also. Uh, yeah. But this is one that you can savor or you could even put it back. Um, uh, there might be a little hot on well, I think, it back, but it's still, um, it still is very, very tasty, easy drinking. Um, and nice. the, and the, yeah, and the most pleasant thing you kind of just alluded to it, it is savory. And I do like savory whiskeys. It is a little savory. Mm -hmm. On the pellet and finish in particular, it's it's got some savor in, in that. It's really nice. Nougat, oh. again. I, gotta keep, I hate keep it coming back to that, but I'm definitely getting that in there. I get, I get like a savory meat or a, mm. I get something Big savory. I I don't know. Bacon. Vegetal savory at all? Huh? Vegetal savory at all? No, I wouldn't say so. Something more like say savory, like say maybe an Asian sauce of some kind. Yeah. That okay. Kind of, yeah. You know, like either like or, or yeah, could be. You know, maybe like a, a teriyaki or soy or something like that that's in there. I've been catching that a lot more in whiskeys lately. I've been coming on, you know, a lot more um, alert to looking for that. Huh. Especially when there's sort of a tartness, a savoriness yeah. when it comes to uh, those whiskeys. Whoop. Whoop. Sorry. Hey, what are you doing? I'm okay. To get this one out. Now we're going to go to the Napo Castle. Yep. 12 year. Is that a single malt or a blend? Single malt. So, okay. what I told you before applies. Generally, the difference being with the unmalted grain, I, I think it helps to um, make a more even blend of the whiskey. And so I think that, oh, just a water. I kind of like this in Irish whiskeys. And of course there is a certain amount of grain in their whiskeys too, which I didn't mention. And that grain that they use other than the barley would be wheat. And one of the things that, that Charlie and I both do here, and I do it, I don't know if Charlie does it as much, is, um, you know, always use uh, bottled water to uh, to wash your glass out. And then what I do is I also then swallow that down to help wash out my palate also for the next one. Right. All right. So, Napoleon Castle. There's a little nuttiness in there. Almost like a nut husk yeah. of some kind. Yeah, I was going to say it's, I was going to say it smells like nuts that have been sitting around too long. <laughs> okay. You know, it's it's kind of stale nuts. If, if any of you have ever gone to a cupboard and said, well, gee, I think I'll get some peanuts out and you open the thing and you can smell that they're stale. Or if you eat, or like if you open up a, a peanut shell to grab the peanut, right? Out, and there's still a little bit of that husk on yeah, there, you know, yeah. that's a kind of dry. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Anything else in that that in there? It's a little savory on there too. It is. There a fruit or a sweetness in there? <coughs> you have to excuse me, folks. I've got a little bronchitis, but. 
Yeah, there's a there's a little bit. Um, oh, hmm. that's got a nice creamy texture to it. Yeah, I don't like the finish at all, though. I the finish is like a, a strong or a a, a, a bitter tea. Yeah, it is. In there, or yeah. even like a light coffee kind of. No, I like the bitter tea. That's what I was going to say. Like a, an astringent black tea. I, I don't care for this whiskey at all. Oh, okay. I like that. This, uh, it's not my favorite, but I, mm. I don't have a problem with it. I bet I can. I, <laughs> if it's wet and it has alcohol and it, chances are there's something I'm going to find nice about it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, I just... Uh, it's not one of my favorite whiskeys, that's for mm. certain. There is something really bitter on the end, though. Some really hits your There's heart. some kind of root in there, though, too. More like a root, you know, for some sort of pop kind of thing in there. There's, um, you I'm like, not sure what it is. Like a sarsaparilla uh, Something like that, or, or a cream, you know, mm. some kind of a cream soda. Or that. <laughs> <laughs> Poof, that. Flavor on the end really got to me. Oh. So get a little of that reflux happening there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Boy, I tell you what, it sucks getting older. <laughs> yeah, it does that. Now this one, yellow spot. I oh. And what cask is this in? Because they've done so many. I see they have a new. All right, so this is matured for not less than twelve years in. Bourbon barrels, sherry butts, and Malaga casks. Oh God! Yep, all all three of them. Yeah, I hate Malaga. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever tasted Malaga? I have. The dirty sherry. Well, yeah. and there's some of those others that are kind of. <laughs> no, like they that call it the dirty I, sherry. That's what. Well, they're... actually, it reminds me of an old girlfriend. But uh, <laughs> no, I go. <don't. laughs> That's funny. Oh, you didn't even drink your water yet. Okay. Yeah, Charlie, you're after this a hell of a lot faster than I am. Let's savor these last three. Okay. These are three really good ones. Yeah, they are. Well, yeah. this one, I don't know if I'll like it now. A Malaga. You have well, to excuse me, folks. I've tasted a Malaga that Glamorangi did. It was $750 a bottle. I wouldn't have given you 10 cents for it. Mm. Then there was a Malaga Wood Springbank years ago. Same thing. It was expensive, and I wouldn't have given you ten cents for it. So, I'm I'm not a big Malaga, and it's it's my palate. What I do and don't like, I don't like dirty tasting, and I mean literally, it tastes like dirt. Malaga does. Well, I know I've had some cherries in the past that I haven't really liked all that much. They're a little bit lighter, dry, bitter, like a Montalato, some of those. But I'll tell you what, the uh, I had a, a, a Cavalon, a Montalato, uh, that's a um, Taiwanese um, uh, uh, whiskey distillery, and it was phenomenal. Really? It was incredible. Well, believe it or not, this one doesn't offend me. Well, good. I'm glad to hear this. Now, this... Um, it says here that uh, uh, Yellow Spot is the rare taste of a Bonders style pot still Irish whiskey. Do you know what that is? A Bonders style? Well, that's what a Bonders style is, exactly what I told you. Okay, what well, we were talking yeah. about before. Yeah. Okay. Now. So basically, you, you've, so you didn't have to pay this tax because you malted all the barley. You just don't malt all the barley. <laughs> now, this has. Some fruit in the nose. It has a lot of fruit in the nose. It has fruit in the palate, and it's got a, a little bit of fruit on the afterburner, too. And I, I would, I'd almost say it's like peach to me, but it's. Is it, I'm getting more like a, a, a sweet apple, like a honey crisp kind of in that. Not definitely not I, a green on apple. The nose, on yeah. the nose, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but when you get to the pellet and finish, I, there's something. There's a there's there's a, almost a savory kind of in in this too. Um, I I would say almost more like light barbecue kind of. Yeah. Uh, but but I mean more like the uh, the um, either the brown sugar or with the vanilla or with the um, right. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, vinegar, uh, you know, kind yeah. of in there with the nose with it. That. Um, this is very pleasant, though. 
Nice whiskey. This is not, and what's cool about this whiskey too, folks, is if you ever get a bottle of this, um, I would, and you want to share it with friends, um, do this as a standalone by itself. This is one of those few whiskeys that, when you first open it, um, it starts to to open up, and it it opens in stages, and it it's not the kind where you it opens up and there's this little nuance of something that you probably aren't going to pick out like a leprechaun <laughs> or whatever with that with this it's it, it's more like what what you, it's an apparent difference so as you're going along as it's opening up you're going to see a lot of different things now that only happens when you first open the bottle after the bottle is, has opened, all of whatever is inside the whiskey has dissipated out, and um, and it and it settles into its its wonderful flavor. But it's very cool that if you're there with a few friends and you know some special people that that you know and you want to share something with, open that up, taste it right away, set it down for a little while, talk, socialize, try it again. See how it's changed. Put it down. Wait five, ten minutes. Come back again. See how much it's, it's changed. Yeah, even more. Um, Charlie and I once tasted a, a single cask um, Glenn Farkless uh, for his his wife's birthday, and uh, to my to me this day, it, uh, it still is probably the one of the if not the most unique whiskeys I ever had, and that thing. Kept opening and opening. Glenn Parkless? The the whiskey that cannot be named. Oh, the whiskey that cannot be named, yeah. And when you first smelled that, it was a cedar yeah. spice chest. Yeah. And uh, and then it just it went to, yeah. to toffee and caramel, to coconut, to... Do you remember to, your comment about it? Because I loved it, because what? it reminded me of the book. It was a cabinet of curiosities, is yeah. what you said. It really and it was. was. Uh, I... I I have one bottle of that left. It, I have one. They they're now selling for about thirty five hundred a bottle. Uh, we bought them for about a thousand, I think. It was I, a fifty year old and and very limited. Adelphi did it, didn't yeah, it? Adelphi. Adelphi, uh, independent bottler. But so what I but getting back to this whiskey in particular, this whiskey um, had all of uh, had all of uh, the opening. The openings that uh, that the whiskey that could not be named had, it, it, they weren't as as apparent and they weren't as as strong. But the whole opening sequence of it, I, I've really only seen that on maybe about ten whiskeys that do it. Where oh, there there have been changes. some. We had that uh, space side that that we tried and we didn't like it. That had won best of space side. The yeah. difference with that, though, what I'm talking about, Charlie, here is you're right. We've had, and actually, I mean, but, yeah, that. But that, we went back to it about Brave a month. Ball, yeah, Brave All. That Brave All. Yeah. That it was a, a special uh, Space Side Whiskey Festival bottling that they did, um, which had a hell of a bite on it. But we came back about a month later, tasted it again, and it was wonderful apples. Just tasted yeah, it lovely. Was. Um, but the difference here is 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 how we, you're going through all of the different changes of, of it as it goes along, and it still goes into something nice. Right. Um, we've often tasted whiskeys that, while we've sat there for 20 minutes and gone back, oh, and yeah. it opened up into something nicely. Yeah. This is different, though. This is stage by stage by stage, all pleasant, all different. And what Kevin's suggesting is, instead of you tasting 20 whiskeys on a given night, you simply get this whiskey and taste it 20 times. And also, when you finish a glass of this, a dram of this, be sure you smell your glass. You'll get more essence. I've been teaching that for 50 years doing scotch tastings. Well, not quite 50, 45 doing scotch tastings. And it's still true today. Now this, but, I'm getting a lot of banana out of, in this. The esters are coming out in a big way in this. I'm are still, you getting I'm that still at all? Getting, I'm still getting the peach. You're getting but, peach, okay. But I do get tropical fruit. It's it's a tropical fruit. I don't. Could it be a melon? Could be a melon. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, no, like a honey even, melon. Well, even a honeydew, or even uh, even something, but some kind of melon with a little bit of honey drip drizzled over it. Yeah, that'd be good. That would be good. Yeah. That'd but be no, nice. there's that kind of what's in here. Yeah. But then there's also a little bit of spice in there in the palate too. There is. Spice. There there is oh, a little yeah. spice. Like I don't know if it's cardamom or it's or it's like maybe. Uh, maybe I don't like, think it's cardamom. Not, not clove, it's, it's, but clove oil. 
Yeah, and it might be clove oil. Clove oil that's yeah. in there, and maybe even a little nutmeg or mace. I was going to say mace. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was. Now, folks, I I got to tell you too. I mm. I do get that out of there, but it also says it on the bottle too. So I I don't want you to think that that I just made that up as it comes along. I, I, yeah, I get I get the mace. I don't. I, huh. Uh, this I, is I, don't, a, I still don't get the banana, but, but I get. Oh, I do on the palate. Do you? I, I do, but but there's also like a melon drizzled honey on there. Mm. The finish. Mm. It's wonderful. It's nice whiskey, and if you can it's ever find any with bananas with a little something on top, <laughs> with a little with another with a, a little. Some I was kind I of, was thinking more like bananas Foster. Oh, okay. That could be sure. Sure, because you, you use the rum, you use the you use the sugars, the brown sugars, you use all of that stuff to make it. Or even you know, fry that, that might be in there too. Might be a little tiramisu. And the reason I say that is, you know, how it has that kind of semi-sweet chocolate yeah, in it. That's yeah. a little bit. But this is sweet, but then it has a dryness to it too. It does. It does. Mm. Nice whiskey, though. Very nice. I whiskey. think so too. That's about a hundred and ten dollars. So far, that and the Teeling are my two favorites. And Jameson 18, I've tasted many, many times. I've always told people, if you want to have a better whiskey for a lesser price, buy this one. This, without a doubt, is the best whiskey on this table today. I can tell you that. The, uh, the Red Breast? Yeah. Okay. It's phenomenal whiskey. Jameson makes Red Breast, I might add, for those of you that didn't know that. And the interesting thing about that is that I'm surprised Jameson still makes red breast. I saw a case similar in Scotland. McKellen made a cast drink and they made their 18 year. And their 18 year was uh, their primo whiskey, they would say. But anybody that had drank the cast drink knew number one, it was a better whiskey. Number two, it got higher ratings than the 18. And number three. Virtually was, every, every year. And number three, it was about half the price. And it was, well, it's third the price. Oh. Yeah. And uh, anyway, by the end of the duration of, of cast strength, it was a third the price. And now people all over the world are seeking the cast strength. And I called a particular person here in Montana who has a liquor store and told her they were no longer making it. So, she bought about every case which you could find in the United States of America, so she's sitting on a ton of it. And by the way, it's now selling for about three fifty a bottle. Uh, you can still find it in bars or in liquor stores in Montana for under two hundred. Can you? Yeah, you can. I the cast I drink. Bought them. This, this one here was a was where I bought the, it. The here. cast drink, McKellen. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the Jameson 18. No, I no, no. Oh, if you could find it, yeah, it's up yeah, there. Yeah, it's yeah. But this has always been a very good whiskey. Don't get me wrong. It's good Catholic whiskey. <laughs> I know. I think the 18 is nice. I, I really do. And uh, as I said, they're not making it anymore. If you need, if you like it, go out and buy some. Put some aside. Um, if you're into collecting whiskey, but you don't want to spend a whole ton of money and buy a case of it, um, I know when I talk about wine, I always say buy three bottles of it if you can. You can drink one right away, and in the back of your mind, you know you have two left. Um, so you hesitate before you have the, the second one. Uh, and even then, you know, you only have one left. Uh, if you're getting into whiskey, buy two bottles. You know you can have one right away or at least hold off for a little bit. And then you've still got one on the shelf. Uh, but with this one, it's it's still available in stores. Um, if you can find it and you like it, go buy it. And, yeah, and because it's, it. it's going to rise in price. Any whiskey that's basically not manufactured anymore or not produced anymore, not distilled anymore, will definitely go up in price unless it's a crappy whiskey. That is not a crappy whiskey. This is a good whiskey. It's this a, almost has a, a little mint on the nose. There always has been. Okay. I, I get that on all Jamesons. I do. But um, it's not peppermint. It's no, more no. like, like man, sort of like spearmint. Well, I used to tell like people it's, I used to tell people it's somewhere between sage and mint. Sage, definitely. Yeah, I could see that too. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's straight mint, like the herb, as opposed to oh, a specific oh, mint. Okay, is what you're talking yeah, about. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Is there any fruit in the nose? Mm 
Could be. A little dried apple, a maybe. Little dried fruit of some kind. Dried apple, yeah. <sighs> you need to put a little on the pellet. Mm. A little creamy. Custardy. It is creamy. It's very creamy. Um, it almost reminds me of some custards, you know, kind of thing. That yeah. creamy consistency, but with a nice... Well, what type of custard? Uh, I wouldn't I'd say butterscotch. Say, no, but I'd a, say vanilla. I'd vanilla say, custard? Okay. Yeah. I, I I get vanilla on it, too, interestingly enough, because these aren't in bourbon barrels. You know, they're just... They're, but this is, this is nice. This I is, don't think uh, they even char the barrels there. Oh, they're just toasted? Maybe yeah, a they're bit? just toasted just a little. Toasted a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they're even charred. Ah, this. Now, this is nice. This is a little bit older. You know, when you find some of the older whiskeys, you're going to get a, a nice creaminess yeah, to them. you are. And so that mouthfeel, that texture is definitely in there. Very pleasant. Very pleasant. And it's, it's, it, this whiskey has always been consistently good. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying... You can buy this for roughly one third the price. You can buy this, and now with it not being produced anymore, I'm sure the liquor stores are getting price increases on it virtually every day. I'm getting a little banana bread in there in the palate. That's interesting. I am. I'm getting some kind of a of a, a bread uh, of a bread, uh, but Maybe like a more like like a, like a fruit bread kind of thing. Of some well, that's I got. That's what I was going to say. I got kind of a Christmas cake thing on it. Are you getting that on there? Yeah, okay. but not, not quite. Uh, but not as yeasty uh, as that. Uh, not as yeasty as you're talking about. I mean, I get more of a sweet bread than a. Yeah, it's more that for fruit bread of some kind. So that mm -hmm. moistness of that. No. You know, there's a little brown sugar on that too. Yeah, that could very well be. Oh. Yeah, in fact, brown sugar is probably. Good way of putting it. It's a it's a nice whiskey. It's always been a nice whiskey, and there's certainly nothing wrong with it. And as I said, this if you like Irish is, whiskey, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's have. a nice Irish whiskey. And it's a nice one to finish with uh, if if you have the money for it. the uh, The last one that we try is a better one to finish with, but this is this is quite nice. I really like this. Well, one. this is a typical pot still I'm talking about that that, that they do. Uh, well, let's just dive into that last one there, Charlie. No ready, tidy. I'll tell you what, I, I, I get, uh, on, why don't you smell this glass for a second? And I get almost like a little Maduro cigar on that. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, a little Maduro. And it's nice that we're sitting yeah, in, a, uh, in, a, um, in a cigar club right now <laughs> where we've had we many have, of those. Yeah, and, we have to have a few, yeah. Kevin's going to give me a really good one tonight, so I can. Oh, yeah. Cigar. Charlie always asks me for one. I haven't had a good one for two weeks. It's damn croup. <coughs> it's a little perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, as I said, we're going to be tasting all of these on Saturday. So, if you would like to come down. Oh, what time is that? Uh, from at. Two o'clock, it goes till five. We're going to have corned beef and cabbage and potatoes down there. That's included in thirty-five dollars, and um, and it's it's more of a social event. You come down there with your friends, enjoy it, uh, and uh, as opposed to a, a very structured tasting where you're sitting there and everybody's smelling and tasting at the same time, those can take a long time, and and oftentimes you'll find. Uh, people that are like, can we, can we go on to the next one, please? And uh, with this, with with it, doing it as more of a social event, you come up when you're ready for the next one, makes it a lot more pleasant and fun. And what's really fun is just for those of you that haven't been to Ireland, planning on going, don't make a fool of yourself by saying, where's your corned beef and cabbage? Because that's not an Irish dish. That's an Irish American dish that was invented when the Irish came here. They do eat a lot of corned beef, but not with cabbage. And in fact, it was interesting. I was reading an, an article about the history of Ireland today, and I never knew this, although I didn't doubt it when I heard it. At the time of the potato famine, they say it was a famine, actually, the English told, took most of their crops, sold them off, and then because of that, they picked the potatoes early, 
they got an infestation of some kind of virus and some rot, it, yeah, some and it destroyed yeah. destroyed the plants. But at that time, the average Irish working class man ate fourteen pounds of potatoes a day. What? Yeah, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I don't eat four pounds of anything a day. Fourteen. I know. I'm just saying right now. And and a man of my size, I don't miss many meals. I don't and, either. But I, I I don't even eat four pounds. I, a day. I read that today, and I went. No wonder they starved to death. My God, you know. But I remember. But they must have been working hard. I, I, I was. I remember sitting in a very wealthy Irish town uh, north of north of the West Coast, and uh, oh, what's it called? Oh, geez, I just based the name of it. But I had a young man sitting about ten feet in front of me at a table, and he ordered a double order of fries, double order of potatoes, and a hamburger. And so my wife and I were watching this, and that came out with, and my wife can attest to this, eight big potatoes. And the French fries were this high. And he ate all of those, and I tapped my wife on the shoulder, and I said, I'm going to the bathroom. She said, are you sick? I said, no, I'm going to relieve myself for him. (laughs) I I couldn't believe this guy. I don't know how much those two words, and he's skinny. He was skinnier than hell. And he downed those eight potatoes and all those fries like there was nothing there. So when I read the and, article and, and today. One bigger, and one burger? Yeah, one burger. Okay. Yeah, so he one, got his protein. Got his protein, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm starts to float a battle <laughs> trip. Yeah. So on the nose here, uh, I get kind of that um, – Oh, that that tire a little bit in there. You know what I mean? It's the it's what? like like a tire. You know, you got a rubbery had, smell. Well, you know, like I kind of like in that. Hmm. A little, it's it's not unpleasant, but it's it's oftentimes that's just what I get. It's a, like a tarry almost. Uh, I could understand, you know, like like a new a new uh, a new car tire. You know that smell. Yeah, that, if that, you walk that, into like a tire store. Thing I get on it is spice. Uh, spice. I'm, not, I'm not sure what spice it is. It's, it's, it's more like a spiced honey in some ways. Yeah, that could be right. I'm having trouble with this one. Tastes good though. Now the thing about uh, Red Breast is uh, typically they've got they've got four uh, whiskeys. They've got the regular twelve year. Uh, that you'll often see on on bars. They've got the twelve year cask strength. They've got the fifteen year old and the twenty one year old. The twenty one year old is I love the twenty one. Yeah, old. it's also four hundred bucks. It a is four hundred bucks a bottle, but I <coughs> I, I love the twenty one year old. Yeah. Uh, they also did a special edition called La Stau, which was very nutty. It was very very nice. Yeah, it's very nutty. I I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, oh, the I regular it the regular cask strength twelve is my favorite. But just so you understand, I think a lot of you understand this, but... That's me. I'm going to say this to you just so to make sure. Gas strength means what was put in the barrel was has not been tampered with in any way. So what you're getting is the pure essence of what was in that barrel. So the strength of the whiskey has not been impaired by adding water or adding anything else. And you're getting the purest of any whiskey when it's cast drink. And what's, course, what's the octane on that? Is, you know, frankly, I, I was going to look at that, and I forgot. I would guess 53, 54. When I say octane, I was talking Ooh, 58. about 58. 58. 58, so that, That's a 116 proof. 0. 0.4. Uh, when, I, when I think of, uh, when I say octane, I mean by what is the ABV, the alcohol by volume, uh, uh, cask uh, strength of that, and uh, this 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 is up there. It's nice. That's why, as I think I may have said on this program uh, before or on this podcast, if I haven't, I'll tell you now. I'll be sitting out judging whiskeys for Royal Mile, smoking a cigar, sitting on the Royal Mile in my chair that they have for me at Royal Mile Whiskeys in Scotland. Yeah, in Scotland, in Edinburgh, Edinburgh. And you'll see some American woman 
pulling her husband up the street and he's half in the bag and he's going, but Gertrude, I swear to you, it was only 60 proof. Scott, we're the only country in the world besides Canada that does proof anymore. It's all ABV. And ABV is twice what proof is. So, I mean, it's no, no, half it's the of other what, way around. Yeah, it's half the other of way. what proof is. So, so, so if a guy says he was drinking a 60 proof whiskey and it was ABV, he's actually drinking 120 proof. Whiskey. And sometimes, sometimes there's, uh, you'll see that's alcohol by volume. Sometimes you'll see things measured by alcohol by weight. Um, alcohol yeah. by weight is four fifths of what alcohol by volume is. Yeah. So, uh, um, a 50% whiskey, uh, ABV, alcohol by volume, would be, uh, would be a 40% alcohol by weight. 37.5. Are you just going to correct me every, every time? So. Well, but, it would be. Well, <laughs> well what's, what's four-fifths of 50? It's 40. Oh, that's 80. I thought you said, never mind. I thought... I thought you said it was 75. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. So Because I did it 75. Yeah, thank you. Before I was so rudely, I'm the one with the MBA. Before I was so, so rudely interrupted. <laughs> but I did take college math. <laughs> this, uh, but this is just a, a great, enough. this is, this is a big whiskey. Yeah, it it's is. fun. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm that's that's nice the same whiskey. way. I like, you I often hear people when they, they're saying something nice about whiskey is they say, oh, that's so smooth. To me, that sounds boring as hell. Yeah. I, would, I would rather have edges. I, I like a beveled whiskey. And, Darn right. And this, you know, is that. It has edges to it. You could add some water to it, change it a little bit. Um, but, you know, for me, I, I like this because I want to savor it. Uh, this is definitely a whiskey to savor as opposed to something to, to throw back. And I think you were talking about also with a cigar. It's oh, yeah. a lovely, a lovely whiskey with its cigar. It, it is. It, it kind of amazes me. It, it, uh, the ones I tasted tonight, I think the Jameson 18 would be the one I'd want with the whiskey or with the cigar. I don't know. I could see a big Maduro with this. Could you? I could. I could see that. A nice big, <coughs> big ring gauge on this. Well, I have, I have a big Maduro. And uh, are we talking scores? Yeah, cut it out. <laughs> I that. I can, I can say that isn't what I heard. But uh, <laughs> uh, I bet you five bucks it's bigger than twelve. You know, I'm not going to take that bet. I don't want to. And uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not. Me. Um, but uh, nice. What are you getting out of the palate with it? Uh, the palate's sweet. It's beautiful. It's spicy. I get all sorts of things on the palate. I get cloves. I get mm -hmm. cinnamon. There is cloves. I get even a little mace. I mean, I get a lot of spice on this thing. You know what this reminds me of? This is almost me. like almost. an all-spice cake. It, it, it almost reminds me, I was going to say, it almost reminds me of like a coffee cake mm -hmm. in, in some ways, but with alcohol uh, put in with it. Yeah, this is, that's exactly what it tastes like. That's a good way Or to a fruit it, cake, yeah. you know, with, with that. But yeah. No, even more, no, I shouldn't say that. It's actually more like a coffee cake. It is um, more like a, it's more like a, uh, what the Serbs make the sweet bread, and I'm trying to think of what the hell they call it. <clears throat> I can't remember. My mom was a Serb, my dad was Irish, and but the the uh, they make this this really spicy. I think bread. you told me about this. They spend like all yeah. afternoon making this, right? They? Well, they there's two. They make lefse or not lefse, uh, uh povetica too, but. This, they make this these little loaves of this bread, and they're extremely spicy. And I love them because my mom found out a long time ago that my favorite spice by far was cardamom. So she just added cardamom and lots of it to the any time she baked this bread. And oh, God, but that's what it is. It's it's like this big spicy loaf of bread. And, God, this is lovely. I I really yeah. like this. And um, what's the cost on this about? Not that much. Uh, you know, you're the bar owner. Well, I'm, I have, but <laughs> I think but, it's like 60 bucks. But you're bucks more frugal bottle. than I am. So <laughs> you're pretty much more cost. Uh, uh, I think it's it's about 60 bucks. 60. That's 60, what I was going to say. Maybe 60. 55, 60 bucks. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I said, folks, this one, I don't think you could buy this for 150 anymore, but maybe you can. Maybe somebody screwed up. It's 
wouldn't be the first time. Uh, but uh, there's a, a it's basically three to one ratio. Whatever this one is, costs you one third of what that one costs you. So, like to finish up here, or what, first off, what are you getting? Are you getting a finish? What are you getting on the finish here? Oh, same thing. I get beautiful, spicy, rich, a little bit yeasty. That that bread kind of yeast, and I, I love it. It's a wonderful whiskey. The spice honey in there, that's a but. And like it I, goes into a lovely, sweet, spicy finish. And right. I'd say about a medium, medium to long. Nice. It ends up dry with with being a little bit sweet, which is actually kind of an oxymoron. Because when you're talking sweet, dry, you're usually talking one or the other. Yeah. Um, but with whiskey, you can actually have both in there. But you get that dryness at the end. You do. Yeah. Um, and... Um, the but, other, so, so out of these, which which would you say were your favorites? Uh, the Teeling, I really liked. And then the last three. Yeah. The last three, you know, obviously are are, yeah. are my favorites on there. I like I like the, the Red Bush, and yes, I am Catholic and I do have a lot of Irish and Scottish in me. Uh, especially a little more Irish today than, than I do Scott. Uh, but, yeah. but um, uh, I, especially the price on that at $26. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why a lot of people, you know, Johnny Walker uh, and, and took their recipe. The last I heard, Diazio owned them, took their recipe for the red and put it into this. That's my understanding. Oh, really? Okay. But, but I don't know. I haven't read that much about that. Because huh. so. I get a lot more of the of the peat. Uh, well, you've had the Johnny Walker that. red. I do, yeah. And so, of course, I have. You know, that's a that's a, a standard uh, blended Scotch whiskey. Yeah. That you find in just about every bar. Everywhere. And it's very popular yeah. among people that drink blends. Um, but, you know, so for this, I, I, I think best bang for the buck is that bottle right there. This is really pleasant and it's, it's worth, um, getting a bottle or two of this. I don't think it's that expensive, but if you're collecting whiskey and you'd like to, and you want to put some stuff aside, put two of these because in about a year, year and a half, it'll be gone and they'll go on to whatever the next one is. That's probably true. I don't think it's good whiskey, but that, that's probably true. The teeling I, I, I found really well put together. Uh, nose, pellet, and finish. That That is a complete whiskey. The same, I would say, about the yellow spot. I'm a little prejudiced. I love yellow spot. This one was really good. If you have the opportunity to buy any yellow spot that's been in French wine casks, buy it. They've won two national awards with French wine casks. And I might add that I have never seen any distillery win two awards with French wine casks except this one. It's very difficult to use French wine casks. I can tell you, Kevin has had uh, one of my favorite distilleries when they first opened was Aaron. And they bought some casks after they made the Aaron The Aaron first. malt from the island of Aaron in, uh, yeah, in Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. And they bought these Chateau Lafitte casks, and I, I ordered two bottles of it from Scotland. And when I got to my house, I went, I haven't even drank anything, but I'm seeing pink elephants because the alcohol was literally pink, and it tasted horrible. It's one of the worst whiskeys wow. I've ever wow. done. You had it at my house. Did I? I yeah. don't remember if I did. Now, the thing about yellow You said spot, you were going to call your boyfriend about it. Well, I, sorry, I am a confident heterosexual, and uh, but I have no problem with, you know, anybody who is not. That's yeah. fine. Uh, the, the thing here is, is this is, I think, part of Middleton. Uh, Which? The, the, the yellow spot. Isn't it produced oh, by Middleton? You know, I don't know that. I, I don't I, know that. I think it is. And now, I thought they were independent. Well, there's also uh, well a, Middleton for those of you that don't know on Jameson. Um, but but there's a green spot. There's a no, yellow spot. No, this is Mitchell and Sons. And who is that? Fine wine and spirits from Dublin, product of Ireland. The um, 
There's also a green spot, which, which, which is for. less expensive. And, and, um, oh, no, Pernod Ricard. Pernod Ricard, huh? Oh, no, it says imported by, never mind. Okay, so this is really uh, there is uh, there's a green spot, there's the yellow spot. Yeah, I've heard in the past there was a blue spot. Have you I heard, heard in the that? past there was a red spot, but I, I don't know. I okay, so so there are different spots that may come back also. Um, the green spot that we've had before is a lovely whiskey, also. Oh, yeah, but they you know, you were talking about the what was it, the Chateau. Uh, it was some. It was a chateau. I didn't know. Okay. You probably did. Well, no, there was a. You're really no, no, no. French you were talking wines. about one about another whiskey before that. Was it Chateau Hikem or the Chateau Lafitte or something like that? That was no. for one of the other Irish whiskeys that you had tried, or was it a, a Scotch whiskey? The you Scotch, were just talking the Aaron, about it before the Aaron. the Aaron. Okay, and what was it? It was the Chateau, Chateau Lafitte. Chateau Lafitte. Well, there is a green spot that's out there that is a Chateau. Um, uh, Leoville Barton. And no, that's is, the yellow spot. Is no, it's a green spot. Trust me. Is it? Yes. I thought it was yellow. Trust me on that. So, folks, uh, it looks like we've come to the end of our of our uh, of our podcast, and um, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully, you'll join us uh, down at the Rhino on um, on Saturday at two o'clock. Come in, have some food, maybe go down to the uh, the parade. And um, we'll see you next time. Salancha.